This is Justin from Amplified Parts. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the Tube Amp Doctor Bias Master. This is a bias meter that you would use to get your amp set to the proper bias measurement. Uh, you know, a bunch of different people make them. We like this TAD one it, because it includes four inputs. So you can actually measure all four tubes in a 100 watt amp at once with the four Novel or Octal probes, depending on which set you get. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the probes into the tube sockets. Uh, like I said before, this whole setup comes with four probes. You can either buy it in Novel, which would be for like an EL84, or Octal, which is what we're using, obviously, for this Marshall. You get your little keyway here. You just make sure you line that up and push it down in there. And then we'll just do that with the rest of them. Keep in mind that you should have already, obviously, removed the tubes. Make sure your amp is off and that it's, you know, unplugged, just to be safe. Put this final socket in. Next will be the tubes. Follow the exact same thing. I can put these back on the top if I want to, if you have the ability to kind of stretch them up there. We're going to flip this over to show you how to do the actual biasing, so I just decided to put them back. That's it. They're in there. You are ready to test. So before we get into anything, we'll talk a little bit about match tubes. So you want to make sure that you have your tubes matched. This is good, you know, in push-pull situations, the tubes are working together. So you generally want to have them of the same rating so that you can get the same amount of power out of them. Uh, it also gives you a kind of optimal sound quality to have all of your tubes matched. It makes biasing a lot easier and it kind of eliminates any of the chances of crossover distortion from a really bad mismatch or any kind of hum from a really bad mismatch. Um, also, if your amp happens to be cathode biased, this one happens to be fixed biased, but if your amp happens to be cathode biased, you know, one tube could end up wearing out before the other one. So again, good to have a matched set of tubes. Um, these tubes have already been in here for a little while and tubes do drift. So they might be slightly off. You'll see once we get into it, but you know, you can always put in a set of apex matched tubes and they're going to be pretty darn good right from the start. That'll make everything a lot easier. So, like I said, we're going to get into the biasing part of it now. Um, you know, there are a bunch of different ways you could do it. You could take some measurements off of the sockets themselves and get some measurements, do some math, etc. This Bias Master actually helps you do all that without any of the math. Um, you know, Tube Amp Doctor kind of supplies you with this nice, nice little list. And on that list, you're going to have a bunch of different amp models as well as some standard models down the bottom, you know, like standard 50 watt, standard 100 watt. This will help you get an idea for where you want this amp to be set. So this is a Marshall 100 watt, so we're going to use the Marshall 100 watt right there. And it's saying somewhere between 25 and 40 milliamps. So as you can see, we got the amp on, we got everything heated up, and it's given us on tube one, 33.9 milliamps, which is actually pretty good. That's actually a pretty good place to have it. I mean, this is an amp we use fairly regularly, so that makes sense. And then, you know, we go to tube two, 33.5, tube three, that one's a little higher, 30, 34.7, but it's not wildly out. And then right here, you're at 30.8 again, a little bit out, but not doing too bad. Get up to the top again, to one. So now we have the meter turned back to socket one and we'll start the biasing. I'll show you how this works. This bias pod is actually marked max and minimum bias, but more than likely that's max and minimum bias voltage because obviously as you turn it to max, the milliamps on our meter go down. So, you know, that probably means that we're increasing the, the bias voltage, which is inherently gonna bring it down. Um, when you get into this here, always try to keep one hand in your pocket, at least I do. You're dealing with a live amp, so you really don't wanna mess around. All right, so we're at 33.4 milliamps. The decent range for this is 25 to 40 milliamps according to Tube Amp Doctor. So you're really in a good spot. Like I said, this is an amp we use regularly. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is just turn it, say you wanna make the amp hotter, and you have that 25 to uh, 40 range, right? You're gonna to wanna to turn this 
So as you see it start going up, say we want to bias it really hot. There you go, you're at like 39.3, and as you go through, you're going to see the same result on the other tubes. There you go. Whoop. And so, again, if we were trying to run the amp really hot, that's what you'd be going for. But, you know, running your amp really hot or with a really hot bias, you know, that's going to definitely shorten tube light. I mean, it might give you some more power tube breakup, but it's definitely going to shorten tube life. It's, it's not really the best thing to be running it right at the high end. Uh, although some guys like to do it. So, um, you know, we're going to roll it back a little bit. And as you can see on the meter, we can roll it down to the cold end of it. Now, if you buy a ceramic too cold, like if we roll it way down here and you're running below the spec they're, they're stating, you know, 25 to, 25 to 40, we're at 20.2 right now, you know, 19.9. So... That is not really going to sound that great. I mean, when you have the, the bias set too cold, your tubes are going to last forever, but it's not going to sound very good. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring it right back up to somewhere in the middle of the range, which is actually where we had it at the beginning. But just for the sake of um, showing you how this works, we're going to bring it back up to right around the 33.9. Can be a little touchy depending on the bias pot, but we'll get up there. So there we go. We're pretty much right back to where we started, which is a good solid in the middle bias setting. You know, like I said, you, you bias it too hot, you're gonna get a little bit more breakup probably, but you're definitely gonna shorten the life of your tube. Too cold, it's not gonna sound very good. And, you know, you'll get a ridiculous amount of tube life, but um, you won't really like how your amp sounds. So now that we got our amp biased up right where we want it, uh, I'm just gonna do a little maintenance. You know, I, I do this often when we do these videos, but we have the amp open, might as well do it. Uh, I'm gonna clean the pots in this amp right here using our Deoxit D5 with the new Perfect Straw. I've talked about this in other videos, but now you can actually see it. It's just attached. You don't have to worry about losing it. Pretty great. So all you really have to do, and again, make sure your amp is off, it's unplugged, you really still don't want to put your hands in here. I'm just going to put a little bit of deoxid, turn them a little bit, and just go right down the line. It's just good to do a little maintenance on your pots every now and then. And that's about it. So that's it for today. We showed you how to use the Tube Amp Doctor Bias Master. You can find that on our website by clicking the link that's below the video you're watching right now. There'll also be links for the deoxit we used and uh, also a link to our Apex matching website. There's a lot of great info on there on why you should match your tubes, why you should bias your amp, etc. cetera, um, as well as a lot of info about how we actually do the matching process. It's pretty advanced. You can find us on Tumblr, Twitter, and Facebook, and you can also Add our channel on YouTube so that you can get videos whenever we're doing them. All right, that's it.